Hello, good evening, everybody, and welcome to Spiritual Talk. Hi, Leanne. Hiya. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see everybody. I hope people coming on, hopefully. Just say hello, guys. Let us know we're going live, because sometimes uh, Facebook likes to play up and kick us out sometimes. So let us know you're here. Hi, Lou. I've got, we got Lou on. we got Paul. Hi, guys. Good Hi. to see you. I know, that's why I can see the comments. The, can you see them coming up now? Yeah. Happy New Year to everybody as well. Oh, yeah, because it's our first one back, isn't it? Our first one back for Happy 2022. New Year. And we've got such a brilliant interview tonight to kick off 2022. I can't wait to show you guys and share the interview. Now, it was on a pre-record that we did on was, uh, Monday evening, wasn't it? I'm completely yeah. fine with all the bank holidays <laughs> and stuff. But it was on a on Monday evening, and it was absolutely brilliant. Hi, Nikki. Hi, Ashley. Some more people coming. Hi, Vicky. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Let us know where you are also, where you're watching in the world. Oh, we got Pamela from Australia. Hi, Pamela. Hi. Morning over there, and Happy New Year to you. Yeah, and the, the, the interview was on a – we pre-recorded the interview on Monday evening, and it is the, as you probably know, the best-kept secret in town. We had Elaine Forpom. Yeah. And for those who don't know Elaine, she is a trans medium, but she also um, does other stuff. She, we'll, we'll go into that as we, as well, you'll find out more with the when we play the interview. But there is a few parts within the interview that we've edited, and one of them was when Jonathan comes in with uh, through Elaine. So, um, do you want to explain? Yeah. So, where before she goes into trance, she likes to put on some music to help her relax down and to allow her energies to blend. Yeah. Uh, this went on for about mm, eight, nine minutes. So we have cut this and we've taken it just a few, like 30 seconds to a minute so you can hear the music and see yeah. her tran translate as the energies blend. But we didn't want you to be sitting here watching the whole eight minutes of it. So uh, you yeah, can get we... into it and enjoy it. Because it's a it's a wonderful process of blending of spirit, and and I think you'll you'll agree that it's a really unique experience. So um, I'm going to bring Hi, in Carol. Carol's on as well. Hi guys. Hi Sean. Sean's in Emma as well. Hi, Let me Sean. This will probably play straight away as I bring it on, guys. Any problems, any technical problems, I will sort it out as we go along. But don't worry. So I'm going to add it to stream, then I'm going to drop Leanne and I out, but we'll still be here. Enjoy. Elaine, Paul, it's such a pleasure to Hello. have you here this evening. Oh, thanks for having me on anyway. Uh, absolute pleasure. Absolute pleasure. I'm, like I was just saying a minute ago, I'm a little bit starstruck because you are like uh, spiritual royalty in terms, in my opinion, when it comes to trans mediumship. <laughs> but you're not really thinking about that. Well, you're, just, you're not just known for um, trans mediumship. You do other things as well. And we're going yes, to talk about I do that. art, yeah. Brilliant. So yeah. on the spiritual talk, you know, and we like to know how uh, our guests start. How did you get into trance? How did you even, was you a medium first? How did it happen for you? Well, it happened, my, my father was a physical medium for over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And I and now and again, you know, I was still at school and, and got older and had my children and that. So I, I didn't sit with him every time and he would travel about and go to the Arthur Finley Centre and stuff like that back in the 80s. So it sort of started mixing with spirit at that time and I, I didn't think anything of it. But I never used to get any messages or anything like that, any clairvoyance, nothing like that, you know. I, I just used to sort of sit with Dad and I loved it. Yeah. And then come 1998, he got too unwell to do things and I had my daughter that year that was the last he done of that and so come 1995 my father-in-law had previously passed away so when my kids were young we went went over to Ireland where he was uh, born and he moved back there I uh, thought so, oh, this is our last day here I'm, I'm missing you is there any sign that you can give that you're around you know the kids are just gone to bed um, we had a double bed each in this hotel room. So the kids were in that bed and my husband and I were in that bed. And I thought, oh, he's not doing anything. Okay, all right, I'll just, uh, I just know that I love you and care for you, miss you. And, and I thought, oh, I'll just lay here on my stomach, go to sleep. 
started relaxing and got into sort of a, a drifting feeling like you do before sleep, just laid there quietly. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it never happened to me in my life before, um, my stomach kind of pulled up from the bed a little bit and out bellowed this, this voice and the kids woke up with a start and, and they said it was so loud, Mum, and it was, we couldn't quite understand what it was saying. I said, well, that must have been your granddad because I asked him to come through and it's weird. And why did he do that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and he said, uh, I think I remember him trying to say, I, I tried to love you, son. I tried to love you. Oh. Then silence, gone. Wow. Yeah. And, and of course, um, their dad woke up and said, what's the matter with you? Are you possessed? Or something? I said, no, no, I don't know. Maybe I was just talking to me sleep or something. I said, but I wasn't even asleep. Well, it didn't feel that way. I was sort of in a half sleep or just about to go to sleep. And that's when you sort of get most things happen spiritually. Yeah. And with that, the next day, I, I called a friend of my mum and dad's. Um, I didn't know she was a trans medium teacher as well. But I called her and I said, what's that? She said, uh, oh, it's trans. I said, well, what's trans? She said, well, didn't your dad tell you what all this was about? Yeah, I said, no, he never told me anything about it. He just did it, you know. And she knew them well. So she said, well, I know a lady named Kay Austin. You can go to her groups only up the road from you. I thought, well, that's nice and convenient. I first started to go to the group and and that's it went from there. You know, the first time it was like a meditation class. I didn't like that very much. I thought, oh, I like this. And then the following week, I thought, well, I'll, I'll go back. I'll, I'll see if I like it, see if I don't. If I don't, I'm not going to bother. And then this uh, teacher, Kay, came in because she'd been away the week before and she started and it started. And at first my guide didn't come in, you know, I didn't even know who guides were. Dad never explained to me. Yeah. And so um, <clears throat> I thought it was a spirit guide and she just used to let us sit in the class and see what happened. She never really explained it that much. Um, so I just, it was weird. I just went in and got on with it and she knew my dad as well, funnily enough. And so um, the first time it was just some random soul coming through named Georgia that, oh, this has got to be a load of nonsense, surely. You know how you think, oh, well, maybe I'll just conjure him up. <laughs> I'm <laughs> there. But I felt all stiff down one side of my face. And, and someone was sitting with us, said, oh, it looked like you'd, um, whoever had come through had died of stroke or something. I said, I said well, if you're going to come through, please can you not bring your suffering with me as you don't suffer anymore? Yeah. But it was, that's how the classes went. And, and Jonathan didn't actually show up in the class. He showed up a few months later. Oh. My my friend who lived next door at the time asked me to do this trance. I said, oh, I'm not sure. I said, I'm, I'm quite new to it. I don't know. So, okay. I thought, okay, we'll give it a go and said a prayer and went into it. And uh, I can't have no memory of who came through. I have no idea. I forgot all the rest of it, just wiped out, gone. And then at the last, this man, Jonathan, presented himself. And I thought, oh my God, the, the, I never felt love like it. it was spark. My whole body kind of lit up from the inside and was, I can't really describe the feeling. It was like it, it had lit up and sparkled and I never felt so much love and happiness in my life I thought to myself well who are you where have you been all my life and do I know you don't I know you and then after that he started coming to learn how to speak in the group wow okay okay as as a, as a from a mediumship point of view I'm kind of really interested how that felt was it your solar plexus you say you felt that when I that, first felt that, yeah, yeah, it pulled my stomach in. So I assume that that my uh, father-in-law had to really, really, you know, impress the thought onto me strongly. So he must have been present in the room yeah. and pull in my solar plexus so he could actually work from, from there. Whereas Jonathan learned to work from here and here. Ah. Some of them work from right down deep into the solar plexus. Do they? Okay. And it can be quite... Uh, I don't know if you're not used to it, it it pulls on it you can feel it pulling yeah i i don't know if if they prefer to work that way each soul works differently yeah some you may feel them 
uh, like in a lighter trance, they just use the throat, or and some they go further into the other energy centers that they might use. I think they go as far as this solar plexus area and, and just work it out, you know. Yeah. They learn how to impress their energy and their thoughts. Uh, seeing as they are a thought, their thoughts have to be impressed into your mind and into your energy to come out as a physical word. And that's how they do it, apparently. So, yeah. so it's through their own thought transference, which in itself yes. is, is an absolute miracle when you think about it. That it's through tr thought transference that you're able they create i mean the, your voice i mean I, we'll get into this a bit later but the voice of jonathan is magnificent i'm gonna say that because i've never heard anybody to bring voice through so strongly you must have been told that all the time i do get told that yeah and he's very clear and uh, mm -hmm. you it's know what, I, even voice. my daughter knew exactly what he looked like because as soon as that picture was drawn she was only a child and she said that's him mum that's how i've always seen him Wow. Just know, and she had all your other drawings that you got done. They're lovely, but it, it's not him. Actually, it's one of our um, yeah, one of our questions from Callum Phillips was, uh, "Can you see Jonathan, and what does he look like?" I saw him once in a dream, and and okay. this is what he looks like. But in the dream, he had more chestnut brown hair. So I I think Francis painted him with like wow. a grey hair, but. He might have shown me himself slightly younger. What a handsome guy. Oh, he is. Believe me, when I saw him in the dream, he's immaculately dressed. I thought, oh, my goodness, you're so handsome. And but how he talks, his elocution as well, and how he speaks. Yeah. Is, I'm assuming he comes from a quite a wealthy or had a very, uh, his last incarnation, he was quite a wealthy, well, from a wealthy family. Because I, I know I listened to one of your um I don't want to say lectures, but one of your uh, sessions, and uh, he was Jonathan was talking about his life and where he was born, and it's really really interesting. He was born into quite a wealthy family, and having that experience as well growing up. So, uh, but that yeah, that comes through with his voice is what I'm trying to say. That 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 the you you can tell that by his, as a medium, we work with voices, don't we? And we can yes. uh, we connect with people through their voice, and you can feel that with Jonathan. That his elocution and the way he presents himself is fantastic. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean I don't speak like that. I'm as common as Mac. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first time I, I heard you, I started the sofa. This race, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the first time I heard you, I sat on the sofa and I was like, <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, a, a friend of mine, uh, Lou Cook, uh, little name drop there, Lou. She's got a few questions as well to ask you and she was blown away when she first saw you and for Indeed. people that have not seen that type of mediumship it 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 defies logic to them i mean i've i've kind of grew up with it uh my next door neighbor used to trance her guide it was a nun she used to come through um mm. my myself and her son used to come home from the nightclub and this lady would bring her her so we'd had a few beers and we'd be sitting there we was like 19 years old and this nun will be talking about the spirit world. So I've got a little bit of experience with, with trans mediumship. So, but for someone like a lot of our viewers that have never seen that kind of thing, it takes a little bit of getting used to. I've had some interesting comments from people and I'm always referring people to some of your talks and on YouTube, because you do quite a lot on YouTube now, don't you? I do try. I mean, my son hadn't been very well. So, um, and his partner wasn't very well there to, that rotten flu, um, he said he felt really awful with it and he had to isolate. So, of course, I couldn't go near him. Yeah. And then I think it was a few days ago, he had a like a snuffly cold, which he thinks was the end of it because he didn't feel ill. And we were going to do a New Year's Day one, but he said, I can't have you near me, Mum, just in case I've, you know, it might be the end yeah. of the virus that's just kicking it out. But he said, yeah. I don't feel ill, but he said it might just be another cold that i've picked up from the last lot so he, he wouldn't let me near him of course and so we haven't been able to do another new year's video but we will do in time yeah you'll get there so, got, you, oh sorry Leanne, go on no, no, that's right. i was just going we've got obviously a, an influx of lots of new 
viewers and uh, one of the new ladies uh, Vicky Hone she'd put on there what is trans mediumship uh, well trans mediumship is is where the the spirit comes to work with you they don't they don't get inside your body and, and possess you what they do is they they draw close to you when you go into an old state of mind you want them to come through it it's like you have an energy and and as you go into that old state of mind your energy widens it expands and becomes colorful so if any of you have ever had those energy photos taken you can see all the the energy around you it expands and so the the spirit is an energy too and and that energy is needing a voice to communicate so they will step into your energy that that expands and and then they learn how to impress their thoughts to create a voice through an energy and that's that's uh the only way i could explain it it might be more complex than that talking about it from their side but it all is an energy because everything is energy doesn't matter yeah. what it is if it's solid it has an energy around it within it he says and and that i believe that to be true yes um, so on that as a, a bit of a technical question where do you go in that moment i've seen you see it and you listen to music i know you like to go off with music but where what is the experience for you what are you experiencing in yourself at that particular moment well i i um i kind of feel sandwiched in between him when he comes through but i i drift off to the woods and places it's like your mind plays you a video of all nice places sometimes i could see him he takes me into a, a hall and we dance together and my mum and dad might be in there and they they come and say hello and they dance with me and and sometimes it's just um going into the woods sometimes he'll be by a lake and meet me there and all sorts of different things and sometimes my mind gets a bit confused and thinks oh can i hold this here oh no i can't i'll just let it go you have gotta let it go and sometimes weird things happen you you kind of uh oh i expect every person has had it it's like you're in between sleep and wake state and it just goes pop and and you jerk yourself out of it sometimes that sort of feeling like wait a minute oh i'm not used to this sort of place and you kind of disappear as like you disappear for a one split second and then you're back again is it oh what was that yeah it happens to a lot of people yeah uh, yeah yeah but it takes that takes practice you've sat in circle for many many years have you not yeah i i had the, the first development circle i sat there for a few years and then we decided to use my friend robin's house he also used to sit for trance yeah and he lived on his own you know so we used his upstairs bedroom and we'd gather our friends together my mother's friend who used to sit with my father she had the experience of doing it and we all used to sit together some came some went but we had ones that stayed we sat there for about six years until uh, robin moved and um then we went on to one of the new sitters that became a long term sitter she took me on and looked after me and we went to her house she started looking after me okay yeah and we sat for a good oh 10 years or more in our own circle on and off you know wow. uh, and i know there was a recent netflix series uh called surviving death and they touched on physical mediumship and trance mediumship can you explain to those watching at home that what it is to sit in a circle what is the experience like and what is it you see when you sit into a circle well what when you're actually sitting with yeah. the group so when you're so so imagine that i i don't know anything about what a circle is is it do you sit in the broad daylight how do you create your um, circle well when we used to sit in our circle in the evening sometimes it was if it was a summer time she just like draw the curtains and put candles on and you could just see me in the light and I'd sit there and go off to music. And then uh, on a more darker evening, she'd she'd light the candles and, and a low, very low lamp light, and we'd sit yeah. like that, you know. And sometimes I'd go off and I didn't have any pressure to do anything. She'd just let me go and we'd sit together, all of us, and they'd sort of loan their energy and 
and sometimes I'd go deeper than others. I, you know, yeah. sometimes it was lighter and he'd come through and speak a lot more. And then other times I'd feel like I was going off somewhere a little bit. So it, it took quite a long time. And then we had my dad's trumpet in the circle, which was quite um, dented <laughs> over the years. And, you know, panel beaten back out again. Yeah. It was, we had that and then hope that we may get, but it wasn't obviously dark enough for physical phenomena. But we didn't worry about it. We, we didn't really worry about getting any physical. We just really sat and, and had a good time, you know, with spirit and connected with them the best way that we could. Yeah. I don't think we ever really got any true physical mediumship because I, I don't think I really went deep enough for that to happen. And some mediums don't even need to go deep. They just have that sort of energy around them, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Clearly, clearly you're, you're obviously meant to be doing and working this way for that to be so natural for you, you know, yes. from what, for, from, from what I'm, I see of you, it just seems such a natural process. It's it is. That... It doesn't hurt or anything. Yeah. The only the only time I I sometimes used to feel a bit tight under here is if I I wasn't relaxing properly. Okay. And if I was tense and not relaxed properly, I'd feel like a tautness there because he may have been pulling to to try and get his voice. But I, I think oh I don't want to be um, not relaxed, so I, I try and relax as much as possible, and it doesn't hurt my throat or anything like that. You know, just can I, okay. Can I ask you? Sorry, Leah. Leah, I'm, I'm this is a bit of my subject. I'm really interested in. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm waffling, people. Um, also, I just feel with the blending that you do, is that do you have that communication with John? Does he nag you at all? No, if there's something you're not doing, or he'd ask you to do something to help, yeah, you. he asked me to believe in him. Um, ah, there were okay. times when I was doubting him and I was thinking, is he evil? Is he has an ulterior motive? Yeah. Is he trying to overtake my body? And eventually, <laughs> I used to think all sorts of things, is he going to possess me? And I'll be Jonathan, wake up. My body. <laughs> and I was <laughs> no, I got scared, you know. I thought, oh, no, right. I said, if you're real, you've got to prove this to me, you know, you, you've got to prove that you're real and give evidence to people and stuff and i want that oh yes he said i'll do that for you that's what I'm going to do anyway you know it took me a lot of convincing me the poor soul you know he probably thought oh, goodness sake you know the really so he waited 10 years and eventually came into the dream and gave me a huge symbolic message telling me that he was from the light and that he had no ulterior motive and to believe in him you know and i thought wow what a message that was you know yeah, that is amazing. That is so amazing. I thought, well, I do, I, every time my heart tried to go in a different direction or my ego tried to say, oh, is this real? My heart would tell me, no, it is real. Trust. Yeah. Trust. And I thought, I know it's real. I absolutely know by all the experiences I've had, it's real. Yeah. I've yeah. gone goosebumpy from head to toe. <laughs> oh, it is real. I've been yeah. out of my body. I've seen heaven. I, I only saw the outskirts of it a couple of times. I've seen, I've been out of my body. I've seen Jesus. I've stood. Hey, a few hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Hang on. A sec. Hold on. Hold on. So you've seen, can you just describe to people what you saw? That's a wonderful thing to say. I, I believe well, I've had. I saw, it. I saw it. Yeah. I saw it. Two of my biggest things. I mean, I, I don't know how I got there. I don't remember how I got there. Okay. I don't remember how I came back. I don't remember for about two hours after. But everything became clear to me. It was just like, there you go. There's your memory. We'll give it to you now. And don't even remember coming back into my body or going out. But I know I must have been in the trance, in the group. Mm -hmm. This was years ago. And we used to have a little converted garage that she'd sit in, you know, made it into a room. And everything's all done out and she had quite a big house okay so uh, she had two little dogs and sometimes her husband would go out of an evening and do other things well he just happened to be out this night and the other two dogs were put into the room with all they needed and it must have been about uh, half eight nine o'clock but it was dark outside you know and there was about six of us in there all sitting with her and I was in the trance and Keith was in his trance and he was quite a powerhouse, you know. Well, I all I remember is being out of my body for a very, very quick. It didn't last long. 
and I was we were in these clouds everywhere was clouds and I couldn't see anything of myself because all I could see directly what was slightly to the left of me I, I saw Jesus you couldn't see his feet because they were covered by up to about his uh, knees in clouds there was nothing else there no buildings no nothing just clouds and pure light um, oh, it was beautiful and then he didn't say anything he just looked at me and I thought what do you want of me and then he just looked at me and I looked to the left and I looked at him we both made eye contact and then before I know it, it was ended wow and when that must have happened when I came back into my body was still in the trance the whole house vibrated yeah and there was no earthquakes or anything like that it was just a quiet little cul-de-sac house you know well, it wasn't a little house, fairly big, but, you know, an average shy large house. And the whole house shook. And all but our door, the room we were sitting in, the door didn't open. But all the internal doors of the house just flew open. All the lights went on. Wow. So she Kay got up. She what was that? Oh, my goodness. She, so she went out to check. She told us, I'm just leaving the circle. And, and she said, well, there's no one there. My husband's gone out for a bit. The dogs were yapping and going mad. And the whole place just lit up, honestly, the whole house. Wow. And in silence, you know. And did Did you actually see his face? I did, yeah. Yeah, very clearly. Was it, he was had it? Uh, very dark brunette hair. I know we all see him differently because he would have been Jewish, wouldn't he? He may yeah. have had darker skin. But when I spoke to a lady who knew about Jewish language and stuff, she said that in those times you would have got the odd one that would have blue eyes. Ah. Perhaps they would have gone with other uh, cultures or something, I don't know. But his eyes were blue. And he had long, dark hair uh, to about collar length hair. And it cascaded in beautiful, perfect waves. And he had the, the beard and moustache be like what you've got there because it wasn't a long beard it was just you know trimmed up a little bit but a little bit longer than yours and he looked perfect <laughs> i mean he looked perfect uh, i just thought what am i doing here what do you want from me and before you know it just gone oh, i never seen anything like it in my life it's just incredible yeah well i had seen other things as well i um I know my guide was doing some healings down at Essex. He spoke to two ladies and he just said, well, you relax, I'll take your hands, took her hands. And I was a witness to both these healings and I come out crying both times. Okay. But, you know, I'll, I'll tell you about that uh, later. I mean, you may have more questions that people want to ask. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, we get, we're get we being very self-indulgent. and uh, going No, on. don't worry about it. Not, I don't feel too bad now. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Okay, I've got a question from Ashley Tear. And actually, you've got one before that that follows into that, Leanne, I think. Um, oh, no, I did, I did Vicky's one, which was okay. what with trans medium you – we've already answered that one. Yeah. Well, lovely, the lovely Ashley Tear, uh, she's asked, what is the purpose of trans mediumship? Well, the purpose of it is, is to have a more direct contact with mm -hmm. spirit. I mean, when you've got a, a, a genuine spirit coming through somebody and talking about the spirit world, it's literally um, from the horse's mouth, isn't yeah, it? Exactly. You know, it's from their really. world, and it's incredible yeah. to talk to a, a discarnate soul, which I've done a few oh, times wow. when I used to run my group at home, and it was amazing just to talk to them. And they're not always just – they were amazing mediums. I mean, one night I sat with them all, and I – turned the music on and they all went into trance it was like sitting in a room full of old souls they'd gone their guides were sitting there with me and i thought oh my god i feel so privileged i'm in a room full of spirit guides and and i feel so loved so i felt like i was the only person physically in there it, it's like they'd all gone they were fantastic mediums all of them i thought i'm sitting in amongst of old souls They've disappeared and now I'm sitting in the room with their guide. It was incredible. Wow. Here's a quick, like quick question off the back of what you're saying. 
do you actually still sit and practice is sit in circle for spirit no i haven't because of that lockdown thing and yeah. um you know and the lady that i've sat with i expect she will want to get back at some point if we can you know just like sit once a month or something because we all miss each other you know yeah. we we didn't sit for over two years and it's I have you got any vacancies? Any chance I can come and join you? So it does sound pretty wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds pretty special. And, and for a lot of people that want to get into trance, there isn't that many circles out there anymore. There isn't the no, people. No, not like there used to, to be, you know. I know Britain is yeah. full of mediums. There's a lot of beautiful, <laughs> incredibly gifted people out there. They're not, yeah. not getting noticed or anything. And yeah. they have wonderful healing gifts and you just meet them and you know there's something in their eyes that just tells you that they're just extra special yeah. people that just are, are really old souls and they're young as well and you're thinking my god you know yeah. yeah if they can get help with bringing these guys through i don't think they'd have much of a problem because they're just such old souls anyway they they just mm -hmm. blend with spirits so naturally and i hope that after i've gone that these young people will come in and do the same, you know? Absolutely. Beautiful. Absolutely. So I've got another one. So I think you've kind of touched on it. Um, it was from uh, Candy. It's got, can you describe what trance feels like? It, it feels nice. Um, if you're relaxed and comfortable, sometimes the, you know, all your mind is always going to be there. You can't switch your mind off. Besides, they're impressing on your mind. So some of your personality may be present. They may use some of your vocabulary to speak. I don't quite know how that's done, but when, I, when I'm when i in trance, I, I feel good. I feel like I'm watching movies and, that, and I feel like I'm totally loved and protected. It's like I'm being blanketed with him all around me and, and, and I can sense my loved ones there and I can sense the person's loved ones around them you know and I was saying oh this is just I don't want to come back oh how beautiful oh. it's a nice, nice feeling you know it's nothing nothing to be afraid of and they just one man said to me he'd been doing trance for years and he taught people and I said to him, look, all the years I've been doing this, I'm a bit scared to let go and go any further. I keep jerking myself out that little bit further that I want to go into. And he said, just imagine, like, falling off a cliff. I said, you what? I said, falling off a cliff? I don't think I'd like that feeling. But he said, into your mother's arms. And I, that was it. I just burst into tears. Because oh. my mum meant the world to me, you know. And, then, and I said, okay, we'll, we'll give it a try. So he arranged and uh i went deeper and i said thanks for that you know that really has helped me trust more mark bedwood his name was he lived in australia okay. Mark Bedwood. he is a lovely man absolutely lovely man to talk to and a wonderful healer you can just tell because he he just has you in tears and you think oh what did you do for but it was lovely just as soon as i heard them words i thought well if i don't trust now i never will I've yeah. just got to try and do it bit by bit. Just easy does it, you know. Yeah. I think there's still very much um, like a, a grey area around trance, isn't it? Because it's not really greatly spoken about. I know the first time I ever did it, I was like really, really scared. And then like I'm not understanding how other people would react to it. And when the first time I did it in circle and everybody's reaction after was... Yeah, I was a bit unsure whether I should still do it again. And it's not really spoken about a great deal. So it's beautiful that you're actually putting it out there and people can get to, to see it as it is. And I think it makes you less frightened. Of yeah, there's some people are like, whoa, wait a minute, what's that? You know, and I got worried about going public. My guide said to me, well, it's time now. Um, you know, we will lead you to that. And I said, you what? I said, I'm too nervous they might think i'm a nutcase he said well there they won't they get used to it. i said you better protect me i said because i don't know loonies and i said they might think i'm a man jonathan i said they are worried about it you yeah, know they won't they'll be able to tell i said it's all right for you you can run off and hide I can't 
I said, they'll think I'm a nut box. And, no, there's all that worry about. So he said, well, now's the time. I said, well, I'm going to do it. I said, you know, I know I'm going to get some stupid comments. They're going to think I'm a nutter or, you know, is this a guy or a woman or what? What have you? I've had children, so I can't couldn't possibly be a man, you know. Well, you're amazing. It's it's amazing. Like, it's correct well, and God knows what. I haven't, you know, I'm, I'm not a man. So obviously I was still a bit afraid about that because people didn't know me. And are you a ventriloquist? And are you this, that, and the other? Um, all sorts of things. I mean, I used to do it on the phones. And this woman was convinced there was a man in the room. What? There's a man in the room, she said. And he said, no, I'm spirit. No, 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 there's a man in the room. She's got a man in the room. <laughs> but she couldn't see, so she didn't understand, obviously. No. Well, if we had a speaker somewhere, someone was shouting for this speaker under the table. Yeah, that's yeah. right. They, um, I've had that before. Someone said, oh, um, the mouse not moving in time to the video. Well, of course, the, the reception wasn't very good. So they thought it had been dubbed. <laughs> I said, look, just take a look at my some of my other videos and you can see more modern ones are better. So yeah. it's not been dubbed. Yeah. Uh, and then that's what she thought, you know. <laughs> Is that something you've had to deal with, though, the more negative elements of people? Uh, yeah, Is I have. Uh, you know, I've had rudeness saying uh, one woman thought I was a, a danger to people on there, on the phones, and really? she been on there for an hour talking to him yet she seemed to think i was some sort of you know evil person and then she put that on there and i thought oh, i can't do this anymore you know yeah. i did get very upset because i'd worked so hard to get that far yeah and so i thought well this isn't really for me i said look spirit you need to do something i want to live this life and yeah you can't you know these people don't understand it yeah i think that, it's been that's been on for a year well, i think a year and a half um Sometimes you get nasty comments, but no, it, the good comments are better. There's more of those than the nasty ones. It's just that us humans get upset and we yeah. we dwell on the not so good days and tend to um, cling on to that. But my son sort of said to me, "Well, you know, just cling on to the good, Mum. Not not the negative. There's there's more of the good than the negative." So. Yeah. And the negative is just where people don't understand it. And because they don't understand it, they would rather throw something negative at it rather than doing their research and try to understand it because it's easier. Yeah, I know. It's uh, the way it goes. But yeah. I, I want, I'm a person that likes to please everybody. I'm the Miss People Pleaser. I like to, I like, I'd like to get perfect information. We all would. We're all like it. I want to get the readings right every day. And, but because people's energies are so different to each other and, and their beliefs or whatever, or their feelings or what they want is different, every person's different. So yes. he treats every person like the same, but he knows they're all different. So you can't tune into everybody. No. You tune into the majority, but there's the odd one that you won't be able to tune into, unfortunately. And you just got to learn to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah, definitely. All right, we've got. Uh, do you want to fire some of your questions, Paul? Or? Yeah, I've got another one from Carol Phillips. If you're watching, Carol, hello. And she's always watching, which is a, a great supporter of Spiritual Talk. Have you ever sat in trance? She asks, and nothing has come through. No, he's always come through. He's never failed me. Always come through. I mean, you know, even if I'm not relaxing. Sometimes uh, he'll come through and he'll have a kind of struggle to connect with a person yeah. if I'm not relaxing. So I have to work on relaxing more and more each time and then he get, can get better, more clear messages. But I always, I've been sitting every day for, for quite a long time. Yeah. I have days off, you know, and every now and again. But I've, I've dedicated so much of my life to this. <laughs> it's like every, every day I'm sitting mostly. So it's time to develop, but yeah. I think um, your own development comes with experiencing going into that trance. Yeah. And the more you do it, you, the better you get. The more you learn how to relax, the more you learn how to, to trust and, and to let go. And some people can just go off out of their bodies and fly off places. I wish I could do that, you know. It's, they just do it so easily but letting go and trusting is hard because we may not go 
that far to to let go that much you know the spirit don't always have the need to take us right into this deep state of trance they may find it easier to work with us in a light state of trance or in a in a more uh, slightly more depth of trance you know they may not need to knock us out to to yeah. be able to speak yeah definitely i've got um a question here and actually i'd just like to say beforehand this gentleman put um this question up but also put a beautiful testimony to you yes um, colin uh wolford him and his wife came to you this year and you gave him a reading and he's put this on the um our page so i hope he doesn't mind me saying um he said that jonathan came through and gave them their messages and you brought through his um i think mother or his wife's mother and you said that the brother was in spirit and they said to him no jonathan he's he's not and then they reached out to you a few days later because he passed into spirit whilst you were had i feel quite emotional here whilst you were giving them their reading so they just wanted you gave them clarification oh, yeah. over. they found oh, out I read his beautiful thing and I thought, what a stunning thing like to read and a credit to you, the fact that yeah. he well, it's, it's more proof, isn't it? It's proof yeah. that they wasn't aware that this gentleman had passed into spirit. No, and they, they weren't. Jonathan was just saying, no. he's here, he's safe. Yeah, that's lovely. That. You know, that, well, that's part of it. Is what makes me so happy i think it's sad when people go and, and that they have to find out but in yeah. the end it makes me happy because they already know that that soul has been yeah. a peace yeah. before they find out and yeah. they haven't got to go through this so much of a shock yeah because it's the torture and the trauma isn't it not knowing whether they've got over there okay or if they're out of pain and that's what people deal with isn't it yeah oh, do you know i've, I've watched about near-death experiences so i recommend that anyone that is frightened about dying or anything like that or frightened about um heaven and I, the experiences i've heard are absolutely lovely i've heard negative ones where they've gone across they might have attempted suicide and they've gone across and, and seen all this like, horrible hell stuff and then come back but i think what it is is they face their fears and get got out of their body and gone to that realm and faced their fears and come back again and had another chance at life. But when you actually see heaven, it's glorious. It's and and there are explanations of it. It's, it's just so fascinating to hear. I think, wow, wow, what did you see? I, you know, I want to know more. Yeah. When I when I saw things, I, I was going to tell you about that healing thing. Now, um, he took the woman's hands and I I just sort of sat back as you do in the trance and he said oh it doesn't cost anything to where we're going and all of a sudden i was like a spectator um there was the the woman this side and her father came forward out of the clouds again we're in the clouds again and he came forward he wasn't a particularly tall man and he come forward and he was looked older had balding head and a bit of white hair and he had a suit on he looked very smart come out put his arms out to his door and said oh darling i've missed you and she ran and she said dad i love you oh wow you haven't changed and I, jonathan was there and i was there and then her father did this and he looked over and i thought and I, in the distance i could see this huge circle of clouds and they were turning in slow motion it was absolutely massive you know and it was turning and slow motion. oh my god that must be the entrance to heaven and then jonathan brought his arm across and he said we must go back now because he yeah. thought well that's it that's all you're going to see from there and then wow. the second one coming in the afternoon she was an irish woman and he said well i'm going to give you some healing if you'd like and yes yeah, she did that and, take the hands and next minute i found myself in the heavens and i was in this big marble room it was like made of the the green onyx uh, the, the marble you know the green marble and the whole ceiling floor everything was made of this green marble and i felt myself standing in the corner 
So I was spectating. None of them could see me. And I, I see this lady. She had a long white sleeveless dress on with a draped neck. And she had a pot on her head. And she was she had all flowers in her hair and she looked beautiful. And she walked over and she did she didn't notice me. And I looked towards the window. I thought, wow, that's a great big open, you know, like you get an open plan room. They knock the windows out. It's just fully open plan. But it's like that. But instead of looking through a window, you just look straight out into the clouds. So you step out of the window, you just be in these clouds. So he he took the woman's hand and, and in front of us, there were plants um, and there was a like a shallow oval shaped marble pool with steps that were all around the edges of the pool leading into it so he took her hand and he just led her in he said come lay in the water and be washed clean he said to her oh my god this is stunning and there was some wallop back into the body and, and those are the healings i come back crying oh my god i just, just didn't want to come back it was just so beautiful yeah yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I'm trying to visualize it in my head. Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I was there. <laughs> wow. Well, this takes us on a whole different uh, journey. But the gentleman that um, said about the beautiful reading you gave him, um, he's got it's a couple of questions in one. He said, um, So this is Colin. Are ley lines a genuine thing? And are they known about in the spirit world? And are they used by spirit? I don't know if they're used by spirit. I wouldn't know that. They, well, they might be because they're energy. Mm. They're, they're, um, they're lines of energy, aren't they, that travel yeah. from place to place. A lot of these churches and things or monasteries in years gone by, I think they built their buildings on ley lines, yeah. didn't they? And, yeah. and all these ley lines connected with each other amazingly over these yeah. hundreds of thousands of miles. And sometimes if people live with houses that when they feel like uh, nauseous or something like that, or they feel a bit lightheaded, they, they might have a ley line energy going through that straight through their home in a certain room or something. They don't feel quite right or whatever. Nothing evil, but it's just it's just energy and it's all over the place. And it, it, it's in these ley lines that they sometimes build these places. Um, I believe that the Egyptians must have built something on ley lines or, you know, they must have had some, this sort of uh, message to where to put their pyramids and everything. Maybe they were, had a ley line running through it. Who knows? I don't know too much about it, obviously, but I, I believe that uh, spirit will use whatever energy they can to connect to something. And because it's everywhere in everything, and they probably gather as much of it as they, as they can up to use it. I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. I was going to ask more questions from, from my point of view because I, I have, um, and Leanne was filming me recently, and I have this problem, and you, I kind of answered it about letting go, really. And sometimes one of my guides, when I go into trance, he kind of makes me jump in and out, like almost like a, a move. It's like a, well, you've seen it, Leanne, haven't you? How would you describe it? That you're not blending. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, but it's like I jump out. It, but it's like that when I get the whole, is this me? And so I recognized it when you said that. Is this me? Is yeah. this my imagination? Am I free? But then they come in so strong. But there's something that I'm just not switching. And I, as much it's like as I blended, tried, trust isn't it trust yeah, it is trust is a big word and sometimes we get a little bit frightened think whoa wait a minute the old ego kicks in or the subconscious mind yeah. kicks in things we haven't been to that level before we're not quite yeah. used to it so we're just going to shove him out back out again until he does adjust to it and that's exactly what's happening but yeah. i did have, i did have an experience once where i came out of my body and i'm not sure whether that put no. fear into my mind so i came out of my body and went up towards the white light it was the most beautiful thing but the lady yeah. i was sitting practicing with she became really scared because she saw my guide over my face wow. um, i wasn't aware but I, I i still wonder whether that kind of there's a fear in me that won't quite let that go but if you how did you feel when you actually experienced that and let it happen 
I felt like I was going home. And Spirit oh, said, to, mm -hmm. I've said to me a few times, Paul, we all return home. And I've always wondered what that was. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget, it was in 2007, I had this experience. And I felt like I was going home. I felt like I was being touched by something so profound. It was beyond belief. So, and like, even now I can't, so maybe there's a part of me that is like a buffer that stops me from truly letting go because of that experience. I don't know. Well, if you're meant to stay here, you won't go back. My dad used to go and he used to think of a garden. I said, how do you do all that, Dad? Yeah. He said, that's all right. Just think of a nice garden. You go into it or wherever, whatever you want to think of that's nice. And he yeah. said, yeah, you go in. He said he used to get out of his body, look at himself and say, who's that ugly bugger sitting there? And then he'd go up. And he got <laughs> once against the Great Wall of China, he said. And then one night, wow. four people to get him out of the trance because – He'd gone and seen my brother and sister in spirit, and he was having conversations with them, and he didn't want to come back. He was in tears. He he literally did not want to come back. Wow. But of course, his body was still here, so he had to come back into yeah. it, still, yeah, still functioning. But he he'd go off and talk to spirit, and he'd have no knowledge about what was going on in the circle. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds pretty fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. His friends of his that told me about it, the, the lady that drew Jonathan and that, they all told me that they had to get four people to convince him to come back because he just wanted to stay there. Wow. wow. It is funny, isn't it? Well, you know, I'm, I'm so happy that you've experienced that. I know that not many people get to experience that. And it's no. scared. Yeah. Yeah, there is uh, there is that um, because I, I remember coming out of my, which is why I asked the question earlier. I remember leaving my solar plexus from behind my the back of my solar plexus, and that yeah. just really threw me. And this most glorious light was coming into my body, and it was so it was obviously my guide, and I trusted. Well, I say obviously, I wasn't sure, but it was just this such a strong, beautiful light that. That again, I can't describe to you in words the love that I felt that was coming in. It's so, not, it's, it's just indescribable, isn't it? Everyone I've heard is speaking about those profound experiences. I mean, I wanted my brother to give me his true birthday because we got separated. And I just went back to sleep one morning. Normally, I sit up and have a cup of tea. I'm up, but I just saw lay here for a minute. I fell back to sleep. And I remember walking past this cafe and, and I could hear the people having conversations through the window. They, I could hear all their conversations going on through this window, but it, there was a window in the way. I thought, oh, it's raining. And then I found myself up near our big shopping centre. I was the only one there, just walking up towards it. And I see the clouds doing funny things. I thought, what's going on? Looks a bit weird. And it was all kind of opening up. I thought, oh, no, there's going to be a massive storm or something. And so I continued to watch, and all these white points were coming up out of these clouds. And I thought, what's that? Oh, my God, I went, what is happening? And then this sky opened up. And I'm not kidding. I, I could see golden white light just everywhere. And these people were body shapes. These souls were body shapes. But they were golden white body shapes with no facial features. And they're all in the crests, all above each other. You know, like we get a choir that curves around and all the yeah. people sing. They were all in huge crests. Oh, my God, I'm home. And then out of that step, my brother, he had a white suit on. And I ran to him. I came off the ground. I ran. I said, oh, my God, I'm home. And then he put his arms out. And they were like Mr. Tickle arms. Wrapped around me, they felt physical, but they were really, really long arms, and they walloped back into my body. Wow! It was incredible. Think, the gold Do you think his arms were long because you couldn't quite get into that space? So yeah, sort of I, I think I was only allowed to go so far. Yeah. What does your partner think of what you do? Is he on board with uh, this? Or? He's. Not into it, is it into it, but he supports me. He's been a great support. And he does get the odd message himself. Ah. You know, he surprises himself and gets the odd messages. He comes out with things. And I think, well, you know, you wouldn't have known that. Yeah. 
And sometimes we've given both sat there and given people messages over messenger so because of a piece yeah. of art or done or something else. And and they say, yes, that's right. And I thought, wow, he's getting good at this. So do any of your uh, children show signs or are they? Well, they've both seen my twin sister in the house. Um, my son saw her once. And my daughter used to always see her when she was little. She said, I always used to see her, Mum. She used to lean round my bedroom door, look at me, smile, and then run through the wall. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, how beautiful. And, you know, she was just, I said, what's she look like? She said, oh, the same as you, Mum. She just had your old clothes on. I said, oh, that, that little monkey. I said, she's, she's got them out of the, the rag shop. <laughs> she got me old clothes out of the dump. <laughs> Love that. Oh, she's a character, you know. So she, do you do you actually see your sister in spirit, uh, or did I you did, her? No, I see her face flash in front of mine sometimes. You know, um, sort of lady men, she'll just go ding ding, and uh, oh, that looks like me. Oh, it's between. Yeah, <laughs> she's uh, a little bit surreal. <laughs> yeah, just see her look, and she smiles at me, and then disappears. Oh, how beautiful! That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But, you know, all these experiences that I hear of that people have, they're just amazing. And your experience is wonderful, what you've had. It's yeah. lovely. Yeah. So do any of your children look like they're going to follow in your footsteps? Well, well I don't know. that they, they are very, I think they're two old souls, really. My daughter knows about spiritual things and home and that. Yeah. I mean, if I get upset about my dad and stuff, she'll say, oh, it's all right. He's with, with Nan in heaven. And, you know, he's... Get her off there, and he's yeah. he's fine now. So she she knows all about it. She's seen spirits. She see um an old man, a coloured man, sitting on oh, the edge okay. of the bed once watching her sleep. She said, "Look, look, a creepy old man." Us. <laughs> but he he might be her guide for all she knows. I said that might be your spirit guide. Yeah, just sat yeah. on her, on the end of her bed watching her sleep. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So what's next for you? What's next for me? Does Jonathan have a plan for you? Um, well, he did say I was going to get busy. And, uh, you know, he said that the, the book that I wanted to write, I, you know, I can start that whenever I feel okay. ready. And I have no idea how to do it, where to begin or what. But He's going to be doing it with you. Yeah. I'd have to do it bit by bit, obviously, or over time. But the art, uh, you know, I'm, I'm carrying on with that. And Spirit give me messages through through that, which is fascinating to me. I absolutely love that. So I should carry that on. Um, always loved art anyway. So, so with, with the art itself then, does Jonathan help you with that process of giving messages through art or does somebody else step in for that? I think sometimes. I mean, I did one for a woman the other day and and her friend appeared in it that was a disabled little boy died okay. at 14 i said i can hit see a little boy in there and then my partner picks something up so you know all these messages again coming through the piece of art you know yeah. it was quite amazing she um she got her friend come through and then her aunt stood above him i said there's an aunt there above him in the picture and, and she's a medium herself so you know okay. obviously she could she could understand these things um so i can find the picture i okay. took so many pictures yesterday that i probably ran out of room on me oh this is back to oh, front yeah. so it, it's a bit hard oh, oh was that the one you put on your facebook page oh gosh yes. i saw that yes that's beautiful that is, yeah it's good yeah. yeah, it's hard because this camera's kind of better front there. Yeah. yeah. And that was Jesus coming to meet them always because oh, of wow. his long hair. I'm not very good at drawing people, but that that was him <laughs> coming to meet them all. That's uh, those awesome. ones that were all, they were, some of them were already there. And, and I've done a lot of soul work and stuff. And one of my favourite ones was that one. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. It's beautiful. Saw that. I like some of the blues that you put. There was one the other day that was a lot. Yeah, of blue it was beautiful. Mm, stunning. Yeah. Some of, some of the blues. Some of the blues that you you do. Some of the different. Textures. Oh, you mean like the abstract thingy? 
Yeah, I love abstracts. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I do like a lot of the abstract stuff. So I've, I've got one. So many I've got one here. Christmas. I've got one here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, that was a lady done that for me. It's supposed to be my aura about 15 years ago. That's all. Oh wow, that's um, like trees and that, isn't it? Yeah, it's like foliage, but the colours are so deep and. There's so much going on with that. It's just, yeah, I love it. Yeah, because you can see spirits in them and that, can't yeah. you? Yeah, I'm sorry that that computer. Now I can see like... someone's face in there now. Yeah. About three people I can see in there. Oh wow! There's one yeah. peering through the middle. So yeah, I'm I'm a little yeah. bit into um the you know, artwork. So it's it's uh, oh. it's, colors, uh the colors as well. Colors are so important. Vibration of color. How have you have you ever thought about doing energy art yourself? No, I, I read. I'm very good at kind of working with kind of reading auras. So maybe you could paint their auras. Have you thought about yeah, them? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the the uh, the yeah, you could you, you could it. get a paintbrush and and you could go like, visualize the person and just paint their auras. It doesn't have to be any like you know particular thing. It could be like an abstract. So well, an abstract is, there, there, there a lot of, lot of pencil coloring of people's auras, uh, especially in the early days. I used to draw people's colors the a gentleman i used to work with a lot paul he he would uh, get us to to work with color especially with people's auras and feel that just connect to the color and that vibration of that color it's a yeah wonderful. oh you should start it up again that'd be yeah. amazing to start it up again yeah. give me yeah. a kick up the bottom <laughs> No, I will. I will. I'd like to get into more oil colour, though, into the oils. Oh, and again, no, so I haven't tried oils. I, I've heard that they take quite some time to dry, and the, the fumes are quite strong. So you've got to work in a well-ventilated area with oils. I wouldn't recommend working in a small space with them, but oils are lovely. Um, if you if you know how to use with spirit direct, well, you know, yeah. to help you. Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe in the why future. not? I, I love art. It's so one for the future, that one for me, oils, but definitely like to get into that more. It's just that expression. I think it was Kandinsky, wasn't it? The German, was it German? Uh, abstract, very much inspired by spirit. I've yeah, probably... so I've, I've seen some amazing spiritual work um, with some of these artists, Archeana, Grammaric, okay. um, beautiful, painted from the age of four. It was. Wow. She painted Jesus, and one of them looked a little bit like Barry Manilow, which she painted. <laughs> but it, he was Jewish, wasn't he? You know, of Jewish. He so, was. Um, yeah. Yeah, he looked beautiful. Although, if wow. Barry Manilow turns up at the pearly gates for me, I'm, I'm going to be thinking, is this a joke then? <laughs> <laughs> West End. But no, he'd sing his way through. We see Jesus in different ways, don't we? Yeah. We all see him differently. Roughly the same, but slightly different in skin color slightly different in hair or length we all see him but that's how i saw him how i explained to you so clear yeah yeah and i definitely have seen him with blue eyes so uh, yes, all blue eyes. Yeah. yeah which is wonderful yeah. you know we've been going for over an hour i know but i've still got more questions have, have you, you yeah. Are you are you okay for time? I'm okay. Yeah. I just need to sort the cat out. I think he's biffing the door. <laughs> so how old is the cat? Is he is he a big time? He's cat? about nine or ten now because he was a rescue cat. But he, you know, oh, I think he's gone out. My partner's just let him out. Cool. That's oh, good. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> so, so do you ever get? Sorry, when um. When you do, does Jonathan pop in even when you're not doing trance, or does oh, he, do, he, has does he, done, he has done sometimes uh, on a rare occasion? He uh, came into my sleep. I was asleep, unaware to me. My partner just said, "He said, you you'll be all right. You'll be fine.'" He said, "It freaked me out a bit, but he said you'll be fine." And then a couple of weeks later, well, or perhaps a month later, some incidents came up that he got upset about and had to deal with. And I thought he must have seen it in advance and said, well, you'll be yeah. fine. He was fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he was. Everything settled down. So I thought, oh, he must have seen it in advance, what was going to happen, and just told him he'd be fine. We're, we'll have to get you back on the show if we can and get, get Jonathan to come through. That'll be fantastic. Oh, yeah, that's all right, you know. Um, 
it would be nice um, if you want me to bring you through next time or you want 10 minutes or something to to bring you through i'm sure he could really show up yeah, if you wanted him to. yeah, I did, yeah I that would be lovely been, yeah i know you've been through. traveling today <laughs> but yeah absolutely yeah yeah are you ready yes yep. we'll be we'll be quiet Hello. Thank you so much for coming in. Ah, yes, I thank you. I will only stay for a short period of time, but uh, I am happy to be with you. It's it is an honour. Absolute privilege. Thank you, Jonathan, for coming through. Well, I am speaking to two old souls, aren't I? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. You have been here many times, both of you. You have quite a journey together. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes. There are many things to be done, and your guides are very proud that you have come here today, and they are very proud of what you are doing. And they say, yes, trust is the key to wonderful mediumship. And, and the sooner you realize that, the better, because we are not here to harm you. They're not here to take you home yet before your time. You know, it is a wonderful thing that you have so deeply connected with your guide like that. And, and yes, as Elaine says, there are not many people that are able to do that, and they would want what you had. You see, so you, you look to yourself and you say, well, I have done a wonderful thing. I have trusted my guide enough to allow him to let me see the light. Yes. So you could write about that experience and any other experiences that you have had and leave them as a sort of a legacy yeah. to let people know that they need and fear passing to the spirit world this a wonderful homely experience yeah definitely yeah oh yes i've been blessed to feel the love of spirit and it is a blessing definitely something that i can't explain in my physical reality that i've experienced the love that i felt from spirit is beyond anything that i've experienced in the physical body it's yes. such a wonderful thing that is the way that it feels for many they will all have uh, different descriptions of what they have witnessed perhaps through a near-death experience but of course uh, you didn't have a near-death experience but you are able to see the spirit world you were able to see the light you were shown that so that there again you would learn in time how to trust and so therefore your guide would be able to make his way through and speak through you yes have you got some wise words of wisdom for us well, I would say to everybody, trust that our world is real. It is as real as it gets and more. I would say that we're all part of the one mass consciousness in connection with heaven and earth. All is rolled into one, isn't it? It is absolutely magnificent and it is uh, indescribably beautiful. And I would say that, uh, you know, there isn't a God sitting on a throne. There is light. There is unconditional love. I would say that you are all a little piece of that. And I would say that it is the universe and everything within it that exists and beyond it. So it mm -hmm. is absolutely and indelibly eternal and infinite. And, and you see, when you are standing in front of that power, that love and that wisdom and that light, you know you can hide nothing. And mm -hmm. you are truly loved and understood. Oh, beautiful. Where do you feel the world is heading at this present moment in time, Jonathan? Well, you are all going through a huge, great awakening. I did explain it to Elaine's group a, a couple of years ago, your earthly time. I was saying to them, there is going to be a, 
a huge awakening and there is also going to be a mass exodus alongside of that and all of the truths of the world shall raise to the surface and you shall be shocked to see it yeah but there of course when you are having a uh, an individual awakening sometimes your fears will surface and they may feel demonstrative or seem demonstrative but when you overcome it it is something wonderful isn't it that you look mm -hmm. back and say well what was it all about what was i fearing yeah. <laughs> definitely <laughs> well, a lot of people's fears and, and demonstrative sights will come forward to them but when you're getting that on a, on a worldly scale it is something else isn't it so you go through a, a quite a dark time before you get to the light so to speak you go through the dark period of time of life before you learn to experience and appreciate the light of it and i okay. would say that this is not going to last forever but you are going through a huge earthly awakening earthly and, and i would say that it is also spiritual yeah definitely how do you feel people could, um, on their own individual pathways, um, help at this present time? Uh, obviously, we're all a collective and it all helps us individ individually as we all come together. But how can yeah. people... Sorry. Do forgive me for interrupting, my dear. But I would say, how can people do that is stop hating each other, couldn't they? You know, yeah. perhaps not judge each other so much for what one is doing and what another isn't doing, yeah. or vice versa. I, I would say try and help each other along. I am, uh, or we are all experiencing here that is a, a great division, isn't there, of the people, and uh, they are all judging one another. Well, this is the part of the period of the dark time, but they will come back together in time. I will say that a lot of you are parting ways and going on separate journeys, whether you be family or not in some ways. Uh, I would say that some will stick together and some will have different journeys to go on. And so they may become estranged from their families, but it is going to feel a little bit lonely for a time, but you are always going to be loved. I will say that it's a huge test that the people of the world are going through at this time, but it will lead you to greatness. Oh, thank you. That's beautiful. When you're getting a huge awakening like this, every truth, whether it be small or big, has to come out, doesn't it? With every single person on this earth. Definitely. Yes. Whether you are culture and your beliefs or whether you are religious, it doesn't matter. It will all show itself. Yeah. Yeah. You may wade through the mud in life and get your boots dirty, but you can always clean them off. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. That's true. So be brave in these times, because light is going to come to your earth, and it is going to come like a torrent, like a tidal wave of love. And your mm -hmm. guides shall tell you the same. Oh, I've gone all goosey with that, and my heart's like, oh. I know. Well, I know that you have felt that because you have felt it before. You have said to yourself, well, I know that something big is coming. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Nothing has the power over that. Nothing. Over love. How could anything overpower that? Yeah. So it is all going to come to an almighty crashing down and love shall prevail. I should tell you that. So, so we're sorry, Jonathan. We're to fear. We're not to fear at all. No, do not fear. You see, the souls that have planned to go away from this world, it may seem sad to their loved ones that have left behind, but their soul planned to go that way, unfortunately for them, but fortunate for the soul that is freeing itself. But it was not ever going to be in vain because it would teach something about other truths that will come to your world. Yeah. Definitely. In, in, on an individual level, Jonathan, how do we deal with our own resistance? Is there something that could help us? I would say trust in the power of love. Trust in the empowerment of you, your higher self that tells you, your heart that tells you what is right and what isn't. So in, in a manner of speaking, I would say trust in your intuitiveness. 
Yeah. Because that will always lead you in the right direction. Definitely. Yeah, you can just feel that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can just feel the love. It's just yeah. <laughs> as I'm sitting here. Absolutely. It is wonderful that you can feel our love because your guides are with you. Yeah. I'm, 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 cry. I'm like, yeah, I know, I'm feeling the same thing, and I could just feel such heat around me, such power and such heat as they come close. We oh, are so they love you very much, and they are saying we are willing to work with you if you are willing to to trust and to let go. Yeah, completely surrender. There is absolutely nothing to fear because Elaine is quite a shy mortal, and she would be the biggest one to hide in the corner. But yet <laughs> she lets me come and speak through her. <laughs> I love that. That is beautiful, really is. Well, we know we know Elaine is tired today, and we do thank you, Jonathan, for coming through. We wasn't expecting this today, and it's really thank touched you. our hearts that you've you've blessed us to come through today. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. I shall speak to you again sometime. Perhaps. Yes, you. Yes, yeah, I kind of think you know that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. God bless you, Jonathan. Thank you so much. Take care and love from us. Yeah. God bless you all. Oh, thank I you. You are felt. Thank yeah. You. Really was. Oh, oh. Thank you. And you're so tired as well. So, you know. Well, we are so, so grateful. Thank you. That's yeah. all. Right. I don't feel too bad. It's just so uh, peaceful, actually. I, I find these days when I'm coming out of the trance, I feel such peace, like a wash of peace in the air. I don't know what it is. It just feels like everything just just quiet, no sound anywhere, and peaceful. It comes through with so much love. It's just yeah. Yeah, it was powerful. And he said we both we had our guides with us and I could really feel their love and their power. And I could feel their essence right behind me. I could feel it in my heart, beside me, the, just absolutely glowing. Yeah, it was wonderful. Oh, that's lovely. You know, you've got to let them work with you. Don't don't let you're missing out on so much if you don't let them do it because it's yeah. it's lovely. And I've got uh, Joe Bradley, who is a trans physical medium. She's a, a tutor with it all. So if you want to go to her, she's oh, the one right too. She just runs courses on it, uh, trance, mediumship. She's been a, a tutor of that for quite a long time. She knows her stuff. Um, I know her pretty well. I've met her physically. Um, Joe Bradley, J-O for Joe and yep. Bradley, B-R-A-D-D-M-E-Y. -E she's on the Got Facebook, it. on my Facebook page. Okay. You'll find her there and... If you two want to join her and further this, you know, then I, I wish you all the luck because of your both your amazing experiences and that it's like you're meant to come here tonight so I can lead you to her so you can be you can start with oh, this. She might actually get inundated. There might be hundreds of people that might want to join <laughs> as well. <laughs> she might well, get I a better teacher that and Mark Bedwood in Australia, but the only difference okay. with Mark is there that there's the difference in times. Time. Yeah, uh, he's also on my Facebook page. You know, um, he's lovely. Uh, I haven't spoken to him in a little while, but I did send quite a few people to him so to give him some something to be getting on with. Uh, we've all got to get it out there. It's, it's getting a big thing now. It's it's not uh, just hiding it in in the corner anymore. It has yeah. to come out. And you know, and got so much knowledge to bring forward for us as well, haven't they? Yeah. It's just beautiful. Yeah, oh, they got so much love. I just, I just crave it every day of my life. I mean, I'm more with them than I am here. Put it yeah. that way. I, I'm thinking of their world constantly. And I went to a place last night that brought about that magic. You know, it's it's beautiful what they put on for the people. And it was like we were walking through a tunnel. It looked like we were walking through the tunnel of light to heaven. Oh, Whoever lovely. designed it all must have. Had that sort of thing in mind. I'll well, show you before I go. Uh, so we also look forward to the book when you write the book. 
Yeah. Because I'm oh, sure yeah, there's a so... lot that we haven't <laughs> touched on tonight. Well, I've got my um, son's partner, Lucy. She She's very good at writing and things like that. Oh, I'm yeah. useless. So she's so going to help me, you know. And I said, "Well, I need, I need help because I can't. I'm no good at that sort of thing. I'm well, useless at it." If you're there's listening, there's a tunnel. Ways. Yeah. Oh, okay. There's, there's oh, a... I saw that on your page. I thought it was stunning. Oh, where is it? Yeah. Oh my word. And oh, when you got like there, all this orchestral, that walking in the air song playing through it, yeah. and I, felt, I, was, I felt so emotional when I first got in there. I thought, oh, my yeah. goodness, it's like you're walking through the tunnel of lights. Yeah, yeah it was beautiful. beautiful. And all these lights were lit up and all the music, with the lights were lighting up in the time it, with, in time of the music and it was covering the hillside. All these lights were going in time of the music. It was dark. And you had all the trees lit up in different colours, lights, and oh, it was just beautiful. It was like heaven. It was, wow. oh, no, I just, I'd quite easily go back to the forest, just stand there on my own and look at it all, and I wouldn't feel freaked out by it. You know, it's just yeah. so. Whereabouts was that? It is called uh, Bedgebury Pinatum. I don't know if it's Pinatum or Pinatum. It's Bedgebury, and it's just outside of uh, Batham. Uh, I'd say about three quarters of an hour outside of Ashford in Kent. Okay. It's okay. right in, in the Y, in the countryside, country roads to get there. But they did like a Christmas magical thing every year and hundreds and hundreds of people visit it. It's out in the middle of nowhere, but it's we never even knew it existed till, till he found it by chance. So You're so the I'm third sorry. person I've seen that is, is cropped up on my Facebook. And I was like, each time it's cropped up, I've been like, wow, where is it? <laughs> Yeah, it, it's a beautiful place, but it's it's um, in Kent anyway. That's where it is, just not wow. too far outside of Ashford in Kent. Well, um, worth what visit. a stunning place. I mean, yeah. you get muddy, you need to wear Wellington boots there at this time of year. But... Okay. Some things are worth getting dirty for. <laughs> yeah, but that, they only do this at Christmas time. Like yesterday was the last day, but uh, they do it every year at Christmas. So if you want to go, you've got to book in advance. Um, yeah. But people come from afar to watch it. It's you it just like you're going into heaven. It's stunning. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. All in the forest, just where I love to be anyway, as you can see. <laughs> beautiful. I just, I just want to say again from, from both of us, because we've been going almost an hour and a half already. We just want to say thank you ever so much yeah. for coming on and, and to, for treating us to bring Jonathan through as well. It's been a... It was made my day. It's made my week, actually. Yeah, thank so you for your time. Been, yeah, it's been an absolute oh. delight. Well, thanks for having me on. You know, we're, we seem like we're all the same or we're all friends because you're going into this. And I'm so happy about that because of your beautiful experiences you've had. And I, oh, you know. You've made, me want to, you've made me want to do it more. My God, my, whenever I've done trance, it's only been when I've sat in my own circle. And he yeah. and my guide always come through to do homework for people. And my guide came through with Paul the other day to tell him to do some yeah. stuff. Yeah. But I, yeah, I did you've made me want to sit and do it more. <laughs> well, there you go. You got Joe to, to talk to. I mean you could have her on your show or something. She's That'd be good. She, oh man, she's got photographs of her on there where they've appeared at the side of her neck and all that oh and, really oh she sounds well, she's, like yeah guess. she's uh does a bit of physical as well so brilliant there you go uh, she's a lovely woman and brilliant. Um, another one you can have on your show excellent Thank you. excellent uh, yeah we, be again, we, we better round we'll this up because yeah. yeah we could be here yeah, all night well, you have a good night and thank you for coffee thank now you so much <laughs> Yeah, stay um, stay in touch. Definitely, yeah. definitely. definitely. Thank you. Thanks, well, everybody. Take care. Bye. 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 That was amazing. Even watching it back just then, uh, for the third time, I might add. Yeah. <laughs> I can still feel it, and I'm still so touched, and like get quite emotional. Yeah, the emotion. It's really hard to describe to people what it was like in that interview because it was very personal because it was just the three of us. Yeah. And when Jonathan came through, our guides were so present and so close. And the power, and they describe about the power of love being the you know, most powerful force in the universe, but we could really feel it, couldn't we? Yeah, it was 
amazing, wasn't it? It was just. It really was. I'm really sorry that I kept saying the same word, but I was just like, <laughs> I was so in the moment and the energy was so overwhelmingly beautiful. I think that was my favourite word of the evening, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll definitely uh, invite Elaine you know, back on again and Jonathan and yeah. uh, see if we can get him to talk some more. So, but guys, there's lots of stuff out there on YouTube with Elaine and Jonathan. Really worth going to have a look and listen and, uh, yeah, just be interested to see what you think. It's been a wonderful evening. We've been sitting here watching it again over again. And, and yeah, I just thoroughly enjoyed it. It's, I've had to actually listen to it at least three or four times to process what he actually said because yeah. you can take it in a slightly different way. And mm -hmm. I, like I said, I would recommend going to watch them on YouTube and listen to some of the uh, the information that's coming through from Spirit. But yeah. do we want to talk about next week before we go? Who have we got on next yeah. week? Oh, I have, if I can just say, if anyone's free, I am doing a healing and light language um upgrading on sunday there's still some spaces left if anyone wants to book in for it okay um uh, and next week um we have i have it written down here somewhere no you're gonna have to do it that's all right we've got the wonderful minister colin bates colin bates so uh is uh is, well he's such a great guy in terms of uh his experience his knowledge he's a well-respected medium uh, and I believe some of you guys might have seen him because he was, he appeared on Surviving Death on Netflix. He was one of the mediums that came on on there. So another great guest for next week. It's going to be absolutely fantastic. I think we've covered everything, isn't it? I think we've done everything. Yeah. And, uh, we've got as many questions as we could that everyone had sent did. in, but obviously we were we bombarded. Yeah. So we were just picking bits out and then obviously yeah. generally asking questions. So I think we covered round about everything that everyone had sent in yeah, we hope so but we'll certainly invite elaine back on again at some point so it'd be fantastic so um it's that time again and we will see everybody this time next week hopefully come back and see and meet colin and we've got another guest on the back of that as well we're doing something a little different on the last half an hour so stay tuned for that guys and we'll speak to you or see you very soon have a good weekend everybody yeah. take care, take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.